What's up everyone, this is Evan with Podpeak. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my top five Reaper plugins that I use for podcast production. Let's dive in. Now I'll be the first to admit, I own a ton of plugins. I've been recording and producing music in podcasts for over 15 years now. So I've invested a lot of money into the tools that I use every day. But today I want to focus on the plugins that come with Reaper for three different reasons. Number one, they're free. They come with Reaper. When you pay $60 for your Reaper license, you get a ton of plugins. And for a lot of people just starting out, you don't have the money or you don't want to spend a bunch of money on plugins and all sorts of different tools. You just want good recording software that works and you want the basic tools that you need to make your podcast sound good. And Reaper comes with all those tools. Uh, number two, they are simple with streamlined controls. Now, a lot of people like to make fun of the Reaper plugins, say they're ugly, they're boring. You know, compared to the ones that you're looking at on my screen right now, yeah, that's a good argument. They are kind of boring. But, you know, there's something to be said about simplicity. And that leads to the third reason uh, why I think these plugins are great, and that's that they are tightly coded and they're very light on CPU usage. So you can use these Reaper plugins, you can stack them on channels. They're not gonna affect the processing power of your computer. They're super lightweight, they work great, and uh, that's what I wanna talk to you about today. All right, the first Reaper plugin that I use on every podcast I edit or produce is RIA EQ. Now, RIA EQ is what I consider to be an all around EQ. I probably own about 50 different EQs, and RIA EQ is hands down my favorite. It's great for using as a high pass filter to carve away those low rumble frequencies. Uh, it's perfect for filtering out bad frequencies. Um, you can change the frequencies here. Uh, you can adjust the bandwidth, and then you can adjust the gain as well. So it's a really great, you know, surgical all-around EQ. And you can also use shelving to boost uh, the high frequencies if you want to boost some good high frequencies on your voice. Plus, you can add as many bands as you want. So I just added a couple more bands here. Um, you know, so you can just do a lot with this EQ. Um, the GUI is resizable, uh, which is really nice. Um, and then it also has a frequency analyzer. So you can see the frequencies here, uh, which is really nice. And you can also add it to your track control panel or your mixer panel so you can have a quick visual reference of what your EQ is doing. So it's pretty cool. Number two on my list is Reaper's Compressor Reacomp. Like Reeq, I use Reacomp along with the Reeq on voiceover and narration. It helps to control the loud sections and juice up the quieter parts of the voice to create a more level and balanced sounding voiceover. Reacomp has the classic compressor controls including threshold, uh, it's got attack and release, it's got ratio, and it also has a wet and a dry section. It also has this nifty auto makeup button and that will help keep your volumes where they need to be based on the adjustments that you've made. Uh, like re-EQ, you can add the recomp to the track control panel. So as you can see over here while I'm playing the audio, as I make adjustments here, uh, you can kind of see the compression doing the work if you don't want to have the compressor open. And you can also add it to the mix control panel as well. So as I make this a little bit bigger, I play this back, you can see the compressor controls in there too. There's also a bunch of great presets to get you started. And I can give you a quick tip. I like to use the master bus glue setting on my master track 
uh, before I render or bounce a final episode down. All right, number three on my list of Reaper plugins is Reefer. Reefer is a powerful audio cleanup tool for helping to cut out background noise, hiss, and low rumble frequencies that sometimes can muddy up your vocal recordings. Now this is a good place to remind you that you should always shoot to get your recordings done as cleanly as possible on the way in when you're doing your recording. Uh, it's a bad habit to get into just saying, oh, well, I can just fix it in the mix. I can just repair it in the mix. Uh, you always want to try and get your recordings as clean and as high quality as possible on the way in. And using a plugin like Reefer or any audio, like quote unquote, audio repair plugin should be a last resort uh, because even if you use, it, use them minimally, uh, they, they do degrade the quality of the audio. So just keep that in mind. So like Re-EQ, Reefer's GUI is resizable, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, I'm going to just play this a little bit. You can see there's a frequency analyzer in there, and it's good um, to just kind of have that as a reference. Now the controls on Reefer to subtract, uh, you know, the bad frequencies to clean up the audio, the controls are a little tricky to set it up to figure out exactly how to make it work. But luckily, I've done a tutorial on how to use Reefer. Uh, so if you're looking for a good audio repair tool without breaking the bank, fear not because it comes with Reaper. All right, number four on my list is the JS DSer. Now, every podcaster or podcast producer should have a good DSer in their arsenal. DSers do exactly what they say. They help reduce the harsh S or sibilant frequencies on your voiceovers, and it just helps make your recording sound more professional. Now, like the re-EQ, uh, the DSer is resizable. So, you know, you can resize it, and it, you've got meters, and you've got all of the controls that you would need to target the uh, frequencies that need to be de-essed. So if you need a de-esser, don't worry, Reaper comes with one. All right, so the final Reaper plugin on my list is probably the simplest, and that's the JS Volume Smoother, which is essentially a trim plugin. Now I like to put this at the end of the effects chain on my voiceovers to make sure that the loudest parts of my voice are never peaking louder than, let's say, minus six decibels. Any other volume tweaks after that can be done with the channel faders in the mixer. So like the other JS plugins, the trim plugin can be resized uh, just like that, uh, which is helpful when you're looking at your volume meters. And it really is just a basic volume uh, trim plugin. So I can pull it, pull it down around, you know, Let's say minus six here, and then I can pull up the mixer. And if I wanted to make it louder here, I could. Uh, but, you know, it's just another level of control in your mixes. Um, and the, the more you have your each individual channel, um, you know, if things aren't peaking over minus six, that means that your final mix is going to be nice and controlled and um, everything's going to be sounding good. All right, so that's uh, this tutorial. If you like the video, uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you have comments, please leave them below in the comment section. And um, I am going to have a bunch more videos coming for you in the next couple months. So take care of yourselves, and we will talk to you soon. Take care.